So these people who move, mm -hmm. do they typically remain with their political affiliation, or are they influenced by where it is they moved? That is a great question. Uh, I think both are kind of true, although one of the things that turned the South from Democratic to Republican was actually Northern Republicans moving to the South. And so some of the places in the South that first started to break loose of that conservative Democratic tradition were in places like Charlotte, North Carolina, and Atlanta, Georgia. And so it, it's funny to think of this now, but it's you know Northern Republicans moving to the South, helping to make some of those places more Republican. Now what's happening is so Virginia, North Carolina, Georgia, they became Republican in the second half of the 20th century. Now what's happening is that Northerners continue to move South, but a lot of them are younger white collar Democrats. So there's a lot of growth in Northern Virginia, you know, people working for the federal government or all sorts of other things in Northern Virginia. Uh, Raleigh, Durham, Charlotte growing, Atlanta's growing. And those places are becoming very, very democratic and they're changing the composition of those, of those states. So I guess what I would say is that people do bring their party ID with them uh, when they go somewhere else, and that can have some uh, effect on on how the election how the elections work. And there's a related point that I would like to address, and that is that um, go, me, go back to this map. So, if you were to put up a map of basically in 1930 of people who were on a county level counties that had high numbers of recent immigrants or um, people whose parents were born in another country, a lot of those counties would be the big industrial counties in Ohio. So specifically here along the Ohio River, there was a lot of mining that attracted uh, you know, immigrants in the 1930s. And what happened was is those voters became very loyal Democrats. And that helps explain why the Northeast, which had so much immigration from overseas and was so industrial became very democratic where the kind of the central and south southern parts of the state didn't get really any of that kind of uh, uh, ethnic immigration and those places stayed uh, stayed Republican um, and you know if you go around Cleveland and other parts of Youngstown you know obviously you see a lot of uh, you know um, you know streets named after you know Polish people or Hungarians, that's my, my dad's family is Hungarian. Um, you know, just a lot of this ethnic mix, you know, Slavic village and that sort of thing. You don't have as much of that in Columbus and Cincinnati, and there were political implications for that that really were still, are still, still impact us uh, uh, today. So it's just really interesting to think about not just maybe in migration patterns within the United States and how they might change certain places, uh, but also immigration patterns uh, from you know from other from other countries, particularly you know, 100 years ago.